Hello, everyone, and welcome to the It Just Works podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and today I have a fun episode for you guys. We're going to be talking about some of the announcements from the DC fandom event, which started uh, August 22nd, which was on a Saturday, and that's when this is being recorded. So I just watched all the trailers, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about it as you know, a couple episodes ago, we were talking about DC layoffs, and um, it's extremely unfortunate to have layoffs. So thankfully, we got some good news with DC. Um, hopefully, people got their jobs back. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the Avengers game. Uh, I played the beta, uh, so I kind of wanted to give some thoughts on that. I also did a lot of research and watched a bunch of videos on the later part of the beta because I didn't play the whole thing. Uh, potential Nintendo Direct. We're also going to be talking about Halo 3 ODST, which will be coming out on PC, and then there will be an update for consoles very soon. Uh, there's just a lot of cool additions in that update and uh, PC release that I really think are newsworthy, especially for anyone who still plays Halo. And uh, that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. So make sure you uh, hit me up on Instagram at it just works pod if you ever want to join in on a conversation. If you have any critiques, if you have any feedback, just anything at all. You are more than welcome to contact me there. I'd love to have a conversation with anyone who listens to the show. And yeah, so let's just get into it. Cue that intro. Hello, everyone, and welcome into the show. I hope you're all excited to be here because I am. Because DC decided to just lay on a ton of news for us today with a DC fandom event, as I talked about in the intro. So they're doing a massive just live stream of announcements and panels, just talking about all their current projects. And as I said before, you know, with the recent news of all these layoffs, uh, it's kind of nice to get something positive on the DC side of life. So I would like to talk about that. And we're going to start with the first announcement that caught my eye is the Gotham Knights uh, trailer. And it's uh, made by uh, Warner Brothers uh, Montreal. And it's basically an open world co-op brawler um, live service looking game. Uh, So you play as Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin, and Red Hood uh, in the intro to the trailer, so it's not necessarily a big spoiler. Uh, Apparently Bruce Wayne dies, so he sends them out an emergency uh, video explaining the situation, so it's up to them to save Gotham and presumably the world, I guess. But either way, the cinematic looked insane. Uh, just it just really drew me into it. I wanted to know more immediately. Uh, I'm a huge Batman fan. Uh, Nightwing is one of my favorite characters from DC, uh, maybe even more than Batman. So you know I'm already gonna be excited to play this game. But it was a great cinematic trailer. It, it did its job. It showed exactly what it needed to, and then they followed up with uh, some eight minute gameplay. So they actually showed the gameplay as well for the game. Uh, it looks great. Uh, you see Batgirl kind of go through Gotham to uh, find Mr. Freeze. He, uh, it's kind of the boss fight they show in the trailer. A little bit of it. And just her combos, just just her fighting style uh, just really looked badass. You know, she's she's with Robin, and they're just, you know, taking people out. Uh, the graphics look amazing. The textures, just all the detail just looks insane. So... <laughs> Hats off to them because I wasn't expecting this game, and I really do think a open world uh, co op Batman game like this is extremely smart. Um, all those characters vibe off each other very well, and I just think it could uh, create a lot of fun moments for friends to play the game together as well. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what they do with this game. Uh, it definitely caught my attention right away. I'm extremely hyped for it, so uh, congrats to Warner Brothers Montreal on their uh, showcase. I think they did a really good job. And we're going to keep it to video games, so uh, the next video game that was announced is uh, Rocksteady's uh, first follow-up to the Batman universe in five years. Uh, The last game they made was Arkham Knight. Uh, This game is called Suicide Squad. Um, Kill the Justice League, or something like that. 
Anyways, it's a trailer with Harley Quinn, uh, Deadshot, King Shark, and Captain Boomerang. And it's just like a funny kind of outgoing trailer. And I just thought it uh, was very different and kind of exciting to see. Uh, definitely exciting to look at. And there's more revealed in the trailer. I'm going to link the trailer because I'd, I'd rather uh, people watch it than just hear me talk about it. But at the same time, it, it was just really funny. And, you know, Superman's in it, but he's being, it looks like he's being controlled by Brainiac. Um, that's what it looks like to me. And, uh, you know, he's holding a pilot that it, they're like, oh, look, it's Superman. And Harley Quinn's like, get out of here, tidy pants. We're here on a secret assassination job. And he's holding a pilot like, oh, look, they saved him or he saved him. And then Superman kills the pilot and they're like, oh, and I think Captain Boomerang is like, hey, do you guys know who we're here to kill? And Harley Quinn, Deadshot and King Shark all point to Superman. And it was just like, I don't know why, but it made me laugh out loud. Like, seriously, I, I was just sitting there laughing and uh, I really appreciate that different take because um, I always think DC thinks they have to be like super serious and dark, which they don't. Um, and it's just nice to see this fun side to Suicide Squad, which it already seems like it could be a very fun group of ca uh, characters that you can have a really f uh, fun time with. So I'm excited to see what goes on with that game. We know nothing about it for sure besides the trailer. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But I want to talk about the movies. So Wonder Woman uh, 1984 is the sequel to the you know the first one uh cheetah's the main villain in it and i gotta say it looks pretty damn good and as i've said before i didn't really care for the first wonder woman but the trailer they showed today really caught my eye i'm i'm definitely gonna keep an eye out on it uh, i don't know if i'd pay to go see it but it does look pretty good so maybe more will come out or more uh you know, articles will come out about it, and I'll definitely want to go see it in theaters uh, if they ever open up for good. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is The Suicide Squad. Uh, it's directed by James Gunn, so, you know, he did, uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is probably his biggest success, and I don't think there's anything wrong in saying that, because he took those characters from the comics, brought them to the big screen, and made so many people fall in love with them. So I am extremely thrilled, especially with the cast for this movie, too. Um, you guys got to look it up. I'll also link that trailer. Uh, just the cast, um, you know, him directing. Uh, I just I'm extremely excited to see how this movie plays out. Uh, it just I have a lot of hopes for it. Uh, I'm not trying to get too excited because the last Suicide Squad made me want to, like, get a refund. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn again, and then Joel Kinnaman is Rick Flagg again. Uh, I like Joel Kinnaman a lot, especially from the Altered Carbon series on Netflix. Uh, I highly recommend watching that. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens with this movie. But the biggest thing... Oh, I'm sorry. Before I get to the biggest thing, Justice League was also shown, the Snyder Cut. They showed a trailer. Um, there's definitely a lot of snippets in there that are clearly like his take on the movie. Uh, if you didn't know... Joss Whedon took over for Zack Snyder to finish the film back originally. Uh, unfortunately, Zack Snyder's daughter took her own life, so he had to step away from production of the film. And Joss Whedon finished the film, and then they released it. Uh, it was completely hot garbage. So after all these years of people saying, uh, release the Snyder Cut, we're finally getting it next year on HBO Max. They think spent another 20 or $30 million on the film. And now we're going to get a movie. So the trailer's cool. Um, I'm not really freaking out over it. Uh, it still looks too much of the same, but there's definitely major differences in this movie. Uh, I will not, you know, uh, won't take that away from them. So I'm excited to see what happens there, but I definitely want to move on to the Batman. Uh, the Batman looks amazing. Uh, it's got Robert Pattinson uh, as Bruce Wayne. It's directed by Matt Reeves. Uh, Robert Pattinson was in Twilight. He's also in the new Tenant movie, which is directed by Christopher Nolan. And I am extremely thrilled for this movie. I mean, I won't lie. I've been excited since he was announced to be the Batman because it's going to be a younger Bruce Wayne, younger Batman. I think this is only the second year of him being Batman. 
Uh, you got Andy Serkis as uh, Alfred. I just think there's a lot to look forward to to this movie. And sure enough, that the first trailer they showed us tonight, which I will have, please go check it out. I'll have a link in the description, is just <laughs> mind-blowing. It, it reminded me so much of the Nolan trilogy. Now, I know for a lot of people out there, that might not be the most thrilling thing to hear. But I still believe... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I really do believe that Christian Bale nailed it when it comes to Bruce Wayne and Batman. So to to get more of this kind of Batman, even though I still think Ben Affleck did his job very well, uh, I have actually have nothing against him. I'm extremely thrilled to see this movie. I mean, this trailer nailed it. I mean, it is everything I wanted to see. Trying to contain my ex- excitement i definitely want to see something more maybe just a second trailer that reveals a little bit more um but yeah dc uh hats off to you you did an amazing job today uh hopefully people will be getting their jobs back as well but everyone please go check out the games and the movies i just talked about because wow uh you know they did a really good job so I wanted to take a quick moment to remind you guys you can follow my page on Instagram at it just works pod. You are more than welcome to join in on the conversation. If you have any feedback or critiques, let me know. So at it just works pod at it just works pod on Instagram. So go check us out, send us a DM, and let us know what you think of the show. I mean, it's it's very important to me that you guys actually enjoy what you're listening to. I appreciate anyone who gives it a shot out there. It means the world to me. And yeah, so that's just, that's just it on Instagram at it just works pod. So now we're going to move on to Marvel's Avengers, the video game made by Crystal Dynamics, who is working with Square Enix. And let me tell you something. I was really excited when this game was announced because I really think Marvel needs to step it up in the video game uh, department. You know, Ultimate Alliance 3 was phenomenal on the Switch. I recommend it to everybody. But when I heard about a open world ish live service Marvel game where you can play with your friends and play as your favorite heroes, I caught my eye. Although I did have my concerns with the initial release cinematic and announcement. And sure enough, <laughs> um, yeah, the beta sucks. The game, in my opinion, should not be released for at least another year. Uh, I think it's extremely boring. I don't think it looks good. I think there's a lot of texture issues, performance issues. I just, I, it's not fun to look at. <laughs> the voices sound like they were trying too hard to, I don't even know. I just, I really was unimpressed with this game. Uh, I even, you know, my brother even canceled his pre-order. Like it's, we are massive Marvel fans. I cannot stress that enough. So to have to have to go cancel a pre-order is something I haven't done in a long time. And I just think the beta is extremely lackluster. I only played a little bit of A Day and afterwards, but I watched gameplay for the last week or two just to see uh, everyone's opinions after putting a lot of hours into it, see what's changed. And the main consensus that I'm getting from, uh, you know, people who've played a lot of the beta because they either like the game or they wanted to make sure they got the most out of it is that the skill trees definitely change up the fighting. They do make it a lot more interesting. Uh, You can do different moves when you change it up on the skill tree. Uh, So that is one thing I want to make sure I acknowledge because that will make the game a lot better. But I don't care for the voice acting, which is crazy because the cast of voice actors are insane some of the most popular people in the industry and i just don't care for it i don't care for the character design i think black widow looks boring thor looks terrible i don't like the way they designed captain america I, i'm not expecting chris evans um i don't even like iron man's helmet i really hate it uh, it looks too retro for me which might not even be a good complaint but uh, the beta is free right now, so you can every, anyone can check it out uh, across whatever platform you're on. So if you hear this, please go check out the beta. Uh, you know, see what you think for yourself. But I was extremely disappointed, and in my personal opinion, uh, if you were on the fence of getting this game, 
I recommend waiting and letting it launch horribly because I don't think it's going to be a good launch and it'll probably be on sale for half off within a three month period. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I think you're better off waiting on this game. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of talented people like Crystal Dynamics working really hard on this game, but I just have to call it for what it is. I do not think this game looks good with how much these characters have changed cinema. I would have liked to maybe see some of that inspiration from the comics and cinema move on to video games because I seriously think that Marvel is lacking when it comes to video games. And this doesn't look like it's going to be it. Um, one more time, please check out the beta though. You know, see how you feel about it for yourself, of course. Um, if you don't want to play the game, but you still want a good Marvel game, uh, just go check out Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. It is available exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. And it is way better than this game. <laughs> uh, so that's where I stand with that. Uh, I wanted to move on to a potential Nintendo Direct uh, happening next Friday. Uh, there's a gentleman who's been apparently calling all these rumors out. Uh, he said that the indie showcase would happen, that the third party partner showcase would happen. Uh, Pikmin uh, 3 Deluxe. He's apparently got all of this right. So take it for what it is. Take it with a grain of salt, of course, because it's nothing official. But there might potentially be a Nintendo Direct next Friday. And the reason why I'm even talking about it is, once again, uh, Nintendo hasn't really revealed much this uh, this year. And with the holiday season still coming up, with you know, I understand we're in a pandemic and a lot of places aren't open like they normally would. And uh, development's been a, uh, really weird for a lot of people out there. Uh, Nintendo hasn't said shit, though. And it's also the 35th anniversary of Mario. So one of the rumors I talked about a few episodes ago was that Super Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy, they were all going to get remastered for the Switch or just re-released. Uh, we haven't heard anything about that rumor. Everyone felt pretty confident about it, but we don't have any concrete evidence of it. Um, so if we can get an announcement on that, maybe some development updates on Breath of the Wild 2, Maybe some Crown Tundra footage that we haven't seen for the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion pass. Maybe a fourth gen remake, which I gotta imagine they're doing it. I seriously hope that they are, because it'd be weird to break the chain of remakes that they've done, because they're all extremely successful. Um, so I just want to talk about Nintendo real quick, because I don't know what's going on, and it's very frustrating that we haven't heard any news on any new games. I don't even like turning on my Switch, like I'm bored of my Nintendo Switch. So, just want to talk about that real quick. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk about is Halo 3 ODST coming to the PC uh, right now with the Halo MCC Insider Program. It allows people who get invited to participate in the new build for the game. So, it's going to have the new updates to the weapons, uh, new cosmetics, just the game itself. Uh, Halo o ODST Firefight's coming to the consoles for the first time since the 360. And then, of course, the entire game for PC for the first time. So we were able to test it. Um, I can play it right now. I think it goes It's live. It goes live. It went live on Tuesday this week, I think. And then, or no, Wednesday. And then it's going to go offline on th this coming Tuesday. So keep an eye out because I'm pretty sure uh, Halo 3 ODST will be released very soon for the Master Chief Collection. But one of the things they're doing that really stands out to me is uh, custom settings for Firefight. And in the original Halo 3 ODST, you couldn't do that. You just had certain game modes, and then you just launched into the map. So one of the biggest things that I took away from it uh, during my time playing this build is uh, you can add vehicles. So there's one map called Lost Platoon, I think. <laughs> wow, I think I just drew a blank on the name of the map. But anyways... There's always a anti-aircraft warthog on it, just your regular chain gun warthog. Well, now with the custom settings, you can add, instead of that warthog, the goshog, an anti-air wraith, a hornet, and a scorpion. So playing firefight with a hornet is extremely fun and satisfying. Uh, so is a scorpion. The anti-air wraith is extremely fun to use, which they also recently added for Halo 3 Forge with the release of that to the PC. And then you can play with a battle rifle for the first time. 
Uh, you can you know change your loadout so you can have the battle rifle and the silenced SMG, uh, just other weapons. So they brought that back, and that's never been in Halo 3 ODST, so that's really fun to play in Firefight. Um, it's the first time the battle rifle's in Firefight besides Halo 5. Uh, what else did they add? They added the silenced SMG and tactical magnum into Halo 3's multiplayer sandbox. So they created a multiplayer mode called Recon SWAT, where you just run around the tactical magnum. It is extremely fun. Me and my cousin Jarrett uh, played it on split screen and had a great time. Um, he somehow found a way to not get one kill. Uh, I don't understand how he did that. Jarrett, um, sorry, bro. I just had to call you out. And then they also have Recon Slayer, which is your typical Slayer, but you start off with the ODST, SMG, and Magnum. And that was a blast to play on Standoff and a few other maps we played it on, like the Pit. And then they have Cosmetics uh, for the ODST characters for Firefights. So you can get Sergeant Johnson, who was originally a pre-order-only character on the 360. You can get bug-splattered characters, characters with their helmets off or on. And then they have weapon skins for the Battle Rifle, Assault Rifle, Magnum for Halo 3, the multiplayer. And then they have nameplates. So all this is coming out very soon. And I'm extremely excited to talk about it because it adds so much more depth once again to the Master Chief Collection. But there's also one very important thing I've left out. And that is that the Halo 3 Battle Rifle, after all of this time, after MCC came out in 2014, finally fucking works. So if you've played Master Chief Collection and you've played Halo 3 multiplayer, you would notice that the battle rifle, you almost have to aim to the left or the right of someone's head just to land a shot. And it's they've never been able to really update it and get the projectiles of the bullets to just go straight, like or you know, just where you're aiming to actually just go straight for it. So they finally fixed the hit scan, and it is very satisfying to actually be able to play the game like it was originally released. So I'm extremely excited to tell everyone about that. This update will be coming out very soon uh, for all players on PC and Xbox and then xCloud in September. So please keep an eye out for that. And that is it, everybody. So I just wanted to do a quick news update uh, because of DC Fandom's event. Uh, I think it's really cool what they're doing. I just hope people get their jobs back as well. And... The future of DC movies versus Marvel is looking great because competition's amazing in the movie world too. Uh, if the Batman has anything to prove or say, uh, it's going to be amazing. So I'm really excited to talk about that with you guys. So once again, you can hit me up on Instagram at it just works pod and join in on the conversation. Let me know about any feedback you have. And I really hope you guys enjoy the show today. Uh, your support means the world to me. So thank you for listening to the It Just Works podcast. I am your host, Ryan. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.